the Go Berserk with Email podcast with Navy nuclear engineer turned email software developer, Troy Broussard. So calm. I'm pissed off, but I'm telling this because I am teaching you how to think differently and how to test differently. So patient. And Ben, that's put a half a million dollars into this company too, is being told that nobody can find the goddamn bug. So charitable. I'm going to start paying bounties every time somebody finds a bug. We're going to deduct $10 that week. So trusting. Do not assume that anything works. Assume that nothing works. And so sweet, it makes sugar taste just like salt. I want to play into the sexiness of marketing automation, but I also want to slap the complexity of it. The Go Berserk with Email podcast begins now. My man, Troy, good to be speaking with you again, brother. What have you got for us today? Oh, I'm going to go right there, right to that pain point for you personally, my friend, because I know you're going to have some pushback on this topic, but we are going to go into the power of daily consistent frequency. Man, I have heard, I mean, the first person I ever heard talk about this was Ben. And at the time that he first came on into my radar, I thought this guy was nuts, like write an email every day. No way. But then I drank the Kool-Aid. I got indoctrinated. I, I joined the cult and started emailing every day. And it, it, it did, it changed my life. I'm not, I mean, I am not exaggerating. It changed my life, but uh, I've been doing it for years now and I might have a different take on it. Yeah, no. And you know, you jump straight into daily consistent email, which actually I didn't use the word email at all. And, and, uh, (laughs) but this is kind of, let's start at that high level because in every single thing that I've done, like I have a monthly subscription called memoirs of mastery that I sell a monthly coaching training and, and, uh, it all is derived on mastery. And mastery is all derived upon iteration. You'll never find somebody that says, oh, I want to master Tai Chi. And um, yeah, just plug me into the matrix thing for five minutes. And now I'm a master at Tai Chi. It doesn't work that way. You have to do not tens, not hundreds, but thousands, if not tens of thousands of iterations to become a Tai Chi master. And a true Tai Chi master will tell you they're not really a master, they're a student, that they're learning, that even though they've been doing this for four decades, they're still learning to go deeper with it. They're still having new epiphanies. They're still discovering new aspects that they hadn't really thought of before. So, you know, I was hanging out with um, with Matt Fury uh, a couple of weeks back over at his place and and uh, he lives close by and I went over and, and he invited me over for an event he was doing and it was, we were having this discussion and he was saying, you know, that somebody was talking about how they were teaching this and they were teaching that. And he says, okay, cool. Let me see a video of you doing it. And so they videoed their move and they showed him their move and And he just kind of laughed because he said, that's not anything of what I teach. And so, well, no, it's exactly what you're doing. He said, you may have made the same movements, but that isn't the, that isn't what I teach. Right. And he was talking about all of the things that you miss and the subtlety. Right. And I'm not a martial arts guy, so I can't really go into that, but think of it like Arnold Schwarzenegger and doing bicep curls and anybody can just sit there and grab a weight and do the motion. Yeah. You're doing the motion. And if you film it in the right speed, it looks like you're really doing it. But if you've read Arnold's book about how he teaches how to do a bicep curl and how to focus on the muscle and how at the very top of the bicep curl to squeeze the muscle at its maximum to force the blood through it to get a really peak defined bicep like he goes to the nth degree of detail and that all comes that mastery that domination it all comes as a result of iteration so to me everything and it's not just software, it's, you know, trading that I do. Yeah, you don't become a trader and all of a sudden, you know, just overnight you make one trade. Oh, I'm a trader. No, it takes thousands of them, thousands and thousands and thousands of trades before you really learn what the hell you're doing. And email is the same way. And in many ways, 
mastery is the litmus test of success because how many people are willing to go through the effort to become the masters? How many people are willing to shoot, you know, 2,000 free throws a day like, like, you know, Michael Jordan? Certainly not Shaquille. <laughs> that son of a gun. It was a 50-50 bet if he could even hit the backboard when he stood up there. I mean, you could call him many things, but a master was never one. He may have been dominant because he was 7'2 or whatever and built like a, a brick shit house, but that doesn't mean that he was a master at his craft. He had a lot of inherent talent. And sure, he did a lot of work, but put him on the free throw line and mastery or lack thereof became indubitably obvious to the most casual observer as he would shoot about 50% of his shots straight into the air and nothing else. <laughs> so compare that to Michael Jordan, who could sit there at a free throw line and intimidate the guy that fouled him by looking and staring the guy down that's standing on the line while he's standing there to shoot a free throw and in the middle of his shot, turn away, not even look, stick his tongue out at the guy that just fouled him and then follow through and shoot nothing but net. Like he had mastered it to the point he didn't even need to look where he was shooting. It was, it was just muscle memory, right? So when I look at email, I look at it the same way. It is... If you want to, you know, go back, I've mentioned it before about the one thing, right? What is the one thing such that doing it, everything else becomes easier or unnecessary? Increase your ability to influence and persuade via email. In our business, in the online world, there is nothing more powerful than that. If you can hit send and, and cash checks on the other side of that by sending people, like what more could, could be more powerful than that? And so to me, like, I just would, it's cool to hear, you know, your perspective that, that, you know, it really had a changing impact in your life. It did for me as well. And I was not a daily emailer before hanging out with Ben and getting to know Ben. I went deep down that rabbit hole and I can tell you, I still don't email quite as much as him. I mean, sometimes on him, some of his launch days, he might have seven or nine emails in a day. Right. Yeah. And I think the most I've sent in a day is like five. So I'm still not at his level, but I will tell you one thing that he has said numerous times and I will completely echo and just leave it here. I have never sent an, another email and not made more sales from it. Like I've never seen sales decrease as a result of emailing more frequently. The more emails you send, the more times you get paid. And it really truly is that simple. And I mean, we can go into the technical discussion and all that of, of some other technical justifications of it. But at the end of the day, it's the lead domino of business today. And so for me, it is just a simple truism. If you want to have more influence, then influence more by writing more and communicating more. It's, uh, I mean, that's uh, one of the biggest things that I learned from Ben. What was that idea of not, not just a daily frequency, which is like working out. You don't, you don't just work out once and expect to get muscles, right? You got to show up to the gym more often, put your muscles under uh, stress, under tension to break them down and make them grow. And I think that was one of the, the big ones when I started emailing daily was getting through the pain of having to do that each day. But that's what changed my life was not the money was nice. There's no question about that. But the being able to influence people and being able to communicate daily without without people rejecting me, I guess, because that's one of the things that we're afraid of, right? That's one of the reasons why we won't go daily is like, ah, oh, they're going to hate me. They're going to get mad. I still get this from my clients too. I tell them the same thing. Email more if you want to make more money. Email more if you want to get more downloads. Email more it is the solution. So I'm with that. But you know what's interesting about this, Troy? I don't do it anymore. Like, I make more money now by not writing email. But can I tell you how that works? <laughs> Just as yeah, a disclaimer. Yeah. So I, I, I wrote for years and years and years, thousands of emails. I wrote daily and I did it in the Ben Settle style what's he call it? Like the Seinfeld style where it's just a story every day, different stories, whatever. They don't need to connect. But what I found in the last couple of years, man, was that I needed to stop writing and start being more intentional about the emails that I put together when people opted in. So it wasn't a daily broadcast. It was all my old emails packaged up, and now I've been using those forever. 
Yeah, well, there's lots of benefits, though. And you have the benefit of having done a lot of them. So when you, you know, just because you send an email daily doesn't mean necessarily that you have to write a daily email as well. When you build up thousands of emails that you've sent, you can pull from that database. And I frequently do that, where I'll pull a campaign or reuse a campaign or an email, and I'll tweak it, I'll contemporize it and and go through the process, right. But one of the other things that you mentioned there is going through the pain of it. And this is important because a lot of people, they'll just go through the motions and they'll never really improve what they're doing. And you talked about putting a muscle under stress. Well, the way that you put yourself under stress with emails to give yourself a time limit and set an egg timer, set whatever it is, you get an egg timer. If you can do an email on an egg timer, you're doing good. I can't get them that fast. But, uh, you know, I type pretty damn fast as a former piano player. So I'm pretty, pretty quick on the keyboard. I can do an email anywhere from about four to five minutes is about what nice. I spend on them. But that doesn't come from writing 10 emails. And I think you could speak to that a little bit because you wouldn't have had that benefit of not, if you had you not gone through this process, you wouldn't have had the ability to go through that database and pull out the best and create an ideal kind of sequence and structure the way that you've been able to do had you not gone through the process of doing it. And the quality of the emails would probably not be anywhere near the same as well, because I hate to break it to you, you don't <laughs> just write 10 emails and you're a great email writer. It takes quite a bit of effort. Yeah, well, look, I still think my emails suck. And that, that's, I'm just going to keep it that way. So it keeps me under pressure. But I, I believe that practice, the daily practice of writing, of writing and doing that for your first year, two years, three years, I believe that makes you invincible in business. It might sound stupid, bro, but if you can pop out a communication that gets somebody to take action, no matter what it is, whether you're selling a product, booking phone calls, or getting people to vote for your favorite politician, like that does not go away. And that that's one of the best things that, that I got that I still have, right? I still have that from the practice of daily writing is that I can write persuasively quickly because of the experience, right? But no, people won't put that that in there. And that's why I think it's okay. Like I, I joke and, and we get writers, right? Over here at the Podcast Factory, we get writers from Ben all the time to help us with the show notes. And they come in with, they sound like little mini Ben Settles. And I'm like, listen, we need to work that Ben out of you so that you can sound like our client who you're writing for. But the only way to do that is to get in the reps, keep making the effort, and then look at it objectively, right? Was this good? Was this bad? Did this accomplish the mission? If not, what could I do better? How could I do it differently? But you don't get that if you're not doing daily practice. So I'm 100% on the daily practice. And then I think after you, you've you done a year, two years, five years, then you can start looking at, all right, well, maybe if I use this this way or if I use these set of emails that way, I can just kind of offload this and it'll work for me forever, right? That's what I don't think most people will get there because they won't put in the reps or the time to do it. Yeah, I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm not in a complete agreement with your conclusion. I think that I'll always do fresh content. I am so kind of adverse to the consistency aspect. I, I do inconsistent consistency, okay. right? Where consistently write, but I send and schedule and, and send them out at inconsistent times. I don't try to orchestrate and, and always send it at 7 a.m. and things to that nature. I don't do that. It is a free-flowing part of my life, and it might go out Friday night at 7 p.m. It might go out Saturday morning at 8.30. It might go out at 3.30 in the morning because that's when I feel compelled to send it out. And so I like to train people for the consistency but I like to leave the anticipation of the inconsistency of when it might be coming, right? And get people to kind of tune into both sides of that same coin of consistency and inconsistency. So I think that, you know, for me, just repurposing content would probably never be something I will do nor condone. I think that I do go back and go through a lot of my content and I call certain aspects out of it. I pull a lot of tips out of it. I'll use it to create tips campaigns for my software that are dripped out like weekly campaigns and things like that nature. But there's a certain part of writing for me that is is actually quite therapeutic. And 
I've written, I don't know, I think at this point approaching 40 books now. Damn. And so yeah, I did a book a month for two years. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were and nuts. Not, yeah. I was doing 20 to 30,000 word books every single month for, for two years. And I've written a bunch of others on top of that. So, I, you know, I've, I'm not just speaking out of my ass on this. I've, I've written some content. <laughs> I've put some words out there, right? And the process of doing that is in many ways almost therapeutic for me. I would probably not stop writing. If I retired tomorrow, even if I didn't write to my list, I would probably just publish books and continue to write. Writing is its own form of kind of creating your own reality, creating your own world and having that that creativity and that passion uh, and an, a way of expressing it, right? It's it's that therapeutic process. So for me, yeah, I hear you, but writing has become intrinsically kind of who I am. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not, I'm not saying I don't write daily. What I'm saying is I don't write emails daily, right? Because we're writing no matter what. We're communicating, we're sending out a pitch, we're, we're doing all this stuff. I've, I've been able to use the the reps and the strength that was built up, but I use it in other places other than email. What I found and, and what I like about the berserker mail and, and, and the ideology is, yeah, it can be daily, but like you said, it doesn't have to be you writing daily, but showing up daily is what matters, right? It, it, showing up daily, being consistent and being in, in the practice it, is the way to do it. Yeah. And, and this can manifest in lots of different ways. Like I said, it, I started out, I didn't say email because yeah. you may be doing <laughs> daily live streams, right? You may be building your audience through, oh, heaven forbid, uh -oh. Instagram, Facebook, some other <laughs> social thing and doing, you know, daily life. Hey, I get it. That's what works for you. Do that, right? I'm not that kind of guy. But if that's what you need to be consistent at, then that's what you need to con be consistent at. A few years back, I helped a bunch of guys lose over 100 pounds of weight. And wow. we did it focusing on what I refer to, as, and it's the perfect analogy for this, and that is daily consistent mediocrity. <laughs> mediocrity. Quit, yeah. <laughs> quit, swinging, quit swinging for the fences. Just achieve a mediocre result, but do it consistently with discipline and focus on a daily basis. If you make consistent progress forward in anything you do, and this goes from trading in the stock market to building a retirement, to losing weight, to getting in shape, to having a better relationship with your spouse, I don't care. If you focus on that 1% factor, getting 1% better, but do it consistently over time. Losing a pound in a week sounds pretty mediocre, right? I mean, you watch The Biggest Loser, they lose, drop like 35 pounds in a week and stuff. I mean, it's <laughs> insane, right? You know, the guy goes into the bathroom and comes out and he's two, two sizes smaller. <laughs> like, come on, seriously, what? 32 pounds in a week? A pound a week is nothing. And yet, 52 pounds in a year is a major body transformation. That is 10 years of your life. If you're 50 pounds obese and you lose those 52 pounds over the course of a year, you've essentially added 10 years to your life. And you've done it without killing yourself, swinging for the fences. You've done it through just daily, consistent mediocrity. And what happens is by setting that mediocre goal, you can achieve it. And that is like a building of confidence. You can sit down and train yourself to write a single email every day, and that will build the confidence muscle of writing. It will build the confidence muscle of, I can get this done. And then you can refine it, and you can set the timer and give yourself, instead of 20 minutes, you get 19 to write it. And then, you know, in a couple of weeks, you didn't ramp it down to 18 minutes, and now I only give myself 17. And that 1% improvement pretty soon it's really dramatic. And at the end of the day, the more emails you send, the more you're going to get paid. And it's a litmus test for your business. Quite frankly, it's a litmus test because either you start getting good at it or you push everybody away. Either way, you got your answer. 
<laughs> Either <know>. way, <laughs> right. you've got your answer. Because if you can't communicate, then you have no business being an entrepreneur. Now, how we communicate, we all have different preferences. Some people are really good on video. Some people are great on audio. Some people, you know, like myself, have a face for podcasting. Whatever. Whatever works for you, stick with that lane. But the point is that if you don't get good with communication, you're not going to be successful as an entrepreneur. And the way you get good with communication is daily, consistent discipline and practice. It's huge, man. Huge. What do you have coming up for us next time? All right. So next time is going to be kind of fun because we're going to get to go down the developer mindset side of the business a little bit and talk about the distinction between how software is created by developers and the biggest mistake that you'll see in most software. And I'm not even going to tell you what it is. We're going to get to that in the episode. Man, I can't wait. Thank you for the talk and the encouragement today, Troy. Thank you, listeners, for tuning in. Another episode is in the can. To get a free Berserker Mail test drive with no credit card required, go to startmytestdrive.com. From there, you can play around inside the platform without pressure. Load up emails and campaigns to see how simple the interface is and get comfy with everything before deciding to join. That's startmytestdrive.com. This is the podcastfactory.com.